afternoon, everyone at First Flat Junior School. It's me, Mr. Kemp. Um, as you can see, I am very, very uh, wrapped up in my hat and my scarf and my gloves because I've just been for a walk and I can tell you it is extremely cold, extremely icy and snowy outside. So most importantly, first of all, please wrap up warm during this week. It's going to be a cold, fresh week. So lots of hats, scarves, gloves, big jackets, big coats, um, waterproofs, if you're going for your walks and your exercises and daily bike rides, etc., please do keep warm and stay safe. Moving on to Monday, the 25th of January, we have another assembly um, through me, Mr. Kemp. A little bit different today. We are focusing on the word connection. So today I'm going to show you a slideshow and PowerPoint presentation that I have created all on my own. I know it's exciting. Um, and I'm going to talk about connection, what connection is, how we connect with people, how we connect through sports, obviously being in um, Mr. Kemp's PE lessons. So we will interlink sport as well. Um, so I'm just going to share screen with you. Hopefully this will work. My PowerPoint presentation. So there it is. It's Mr. Kemp assembly and it's about connection. And what I want you to do for about 10 to 15 seconds, not long, because I secretly don't like sitting here thinking on my own for 10 to 15 seconds, is what you think connection is. Go, 10 to 15 seconds. Okay, time's up. So what does connection mean with this emoji? I don't know, what does it mean? Connection is a relationship in which a person or thing is linked or associated with something else. And there are examples below. So in school, a teacher might have a connection with his or her pupils when teaching, whether it's maths, English, geography, walking through a corridor, um, you will connect with the people you work with. And in our case, working in school, we connect with the pupils that we teach. Um, peanut butter and jelly share a connection. If you have a peanut and butter jelly sandwich and they're in the sandwich together, they're sharing that bond, that connection in that sandwich before, of course, we eat it. And another one saying hello to someone you meet is a form of connection. So if I walk into school and see Mrs. Winter and I go, morning, Mrs. Winter, and she might say good morning back, she usually does. Um, we are connecting through talking to one another. And that's another example. Um, but why is connection important? And again, I'm just going to read you um, what I have written on my screen. So connecting with others is more important than you think. Sorry about the the and the N in the wrong place. Social connection can lower anxiety and depression, help us regulate our emotions, lead to higher self-esteem and empathy, and actually improve our immune system. So having lots of connections with different people, different things, different items, different ways in life, this is going to improve, as you can read from the screen, so many things in our individual daily life. Um, it lowers anxiety and depression. Now, you know, we know anxiety and depression, it, it exists in today's uh, modern world. And especially with COVID and lockdown, you know, it's quite difficult sometimes to pick yourselves up, have a positive attitude um, and be really motivated. So having a connection with other people around you, whether it's in your household, whether it's uh, exercising with one person, um, which we're allowed to do outside, you can up your motivation and you can be positive within your life just by being connected through one of those things, as we've just said. Um, it helps us regulate our emotions, which is really good for stability in our lives and leading to higher self-esteem. So it's basically saying with connection through um, people and things and pets and animals, 
we are likely to become more confident in our own ability, confident in our own work, confident in the things that we do as individual people. And it helps us with higher self-esteem. Really important. And actually improves our immune systems, which we want to stay fit, we want to stay healthy, we want to stay active. And having a healthy immune system is so vital and important um, because it helps us fight germs, it helps us stop getting ill or getting sick. So actually having connections helps us build a good immune system as well. So that's very, very important. But how is connection used? Um, you might not think it, but we use connection in many ways. And I'm going to share three ways with you um, here that I've written down. So the first one is communication. Like I'm doing now, I'm communicating to you via Zoom and we have a connection because hopefully you're listening and watching this assembly. Um, if I wanted to connect with another human being, ideally I would use conversation and voice to engage with them. So for example, in PE, Mr. Kemp would use commands and instruction at times in order to make a connection via communication. It could be um, telling you instructions in a warm up. It could be talking about a particular skill or pass or something we're doing in a lesson. I use my tone of voice and communicate with you to make sure we are connected in that lesson. Uh, another one is body language. So this can be used in different ways to connect with someone or something. An example is when you hug your family members or friends and you instantly uh, are connected through your senses. So through touch, through your eyesight, through your sense of smell. Um, this also can be the same for um, pets. If you hug your dog or you have a cat and you stroke your cat, you are connecting through body language um, that you use in order for other people to see and feel a connection of some sort with you. And remember, not all connections are positive. Some connections might be sad. I know at times um, if we're sad, we go and speak to someone we're close to. If we're in school and we're upset, we go and speak to a teacher. Um, and that is still a connection, even if it might be a sad one. I know that positive connection, for example, if we win a sports competition, we share that with the whole entire school and we connect that competition and that victory with everybody in the school. Um, and the last one there is emotional. So many connections are made emotionally as we all have a mixture of feelings towards different things or people. You might have an emotional connection with your siblings or parents or guardians. Another example is having a connection with your pets or any animals that we might see. We can generate all kinds of feelings for different scenarios. As I just said, happy feelings, sad feelings. Um, you know, uh, the example I've got here is when feeding ducks, we usually feel happy as we're giving them something to eat. So we're giving them something to live off and you're connecting through feeding those ducks. So even though you don't know or own the ducks uh, on a personal basis, you're still making that connection. And as you can see, Mr. Bean there feeding the ducks, that duck, Mr. Bean are connected in some way because he is feeding um, and the duck is responding and eating. So that's just ways in which we do use connection. Moving on. So how does sport connect people? Now, this is very interesting. Um, and I'll read you a few things that I've said, and then we'll go through through some examples. Uh, the love of sport can bring people and communities together. Being a part of a team is an important aspect of being involved in sport, whether that's individual um, sports or team sports, because even in an individual sport, as it says below, a sense of team can be created and is encouraged to help with motivation, interest and persistence. This might be from your coach. This might be from your parent or guardians. Although you might play tennis on your own, you have other people around you to support you and connect with you through an individual sport. Um, athletes are involved in teams for a variety of reasons, to be with friends, to build their skills with others and create relationships. And again, this all goes back to being connected with people. 
you make friends. So if you're making friends with someone, you're sharing and connecting with them. You're building skills with other people. So if you're in a doubles match in tennis, you are doing similar shots and connecting different shots and different movement on the court as tennis players. And then the last one, creating relationships. It goes back to friendships. Um, we create relationships through connection. Um, the types of connection in sport can be team, coach, parent, and community connection. As previously just mentioned, all of these things can bring us together and help us thrive in whatever sport we are taking part in to become more successful. And if you look um, on the left hand side, I'm going to try and annotate this. Let's have a look. You can see Mr. Kemp's team feel connected when we celebrate a goal. And if you're not sure where I am, I am here. That's me. Woohoo. Team Burnham. Uh, so when we score, we celebrate and we use body language. We have um, touch. We have feel. We have, you know, high drive positivity. We have communication through cheering and celebrating a goal. That is just one example of feeling connected within a sport. And I think we won that game, which makes it even better. Moving on, I'm just going to take that off. Uh, okay. If it there, no, nope, not that one. Oh, yeah, it is that one. Good. And the last slide. This is just um, something that I want to share with you. I found these online. And they're just a few quotes about connection, um, friendships, relationships, and different things. So the top one, it says, some relationships are like Tom and Jerry. They tease each other, knock each other down, irritate each other, but can't live without each other. And we all have people in our lives that we can't live without. You know, you couldn't live without us teachers because you wouldn't be able to be taught by anybody. Um, you can't live without your parents or grandparents or guardians because they help us become um, well-mannered and brought up and become polite and, you know, teach us lots of different things and ways in life. Um, the second one on the left, it says a connection is the energy that exists between two people when they feel seen, heard and valued, when they can give and receive without judgment and when they desire sustenance and strength from the relationship. Again, it's going back to friendship and relationships. We build big, big connections um, when we have best friends or when we have, uh, it might be a relationship with our parent or a relationship with a sibling. And the energy, as it says, it exists between two people because you are connecting, whether that's through communication, whether it's through body language, you know, any of the things we spoke about, you have a form of connection. And the last one there, it just says, good friends are like stars. You don't always see them, but you know they're always there. So when we talk about stars, they're not all, you know, you can't see them all the time, even at night, but they're always there up in the sky. And that is the same as good friends and good relationships in general. They might not always be by your side, but we know that they will never leave and they'll always be there for us. Um, that's pretty much it for my assembly today. Um, it's important to stay connected to people during this lockdown time and during COVID. Um, as I said, people in school, you're quite lucky and fortunate to have connections within school and see some friends in school. Other people at home, such as myself as well, we don't have that much connection to the outside world because we have to stay indoors. However, if you walk down the street or you're walking on your exercise and you see someone, say hello. Um, that is a way of connecting with people and keeping us positive um, and also just keep building strong relationships and good friendships through connection. Um, I know some of you email me your scores and your results for your virtual challenges. That is a way of connecting with me so I know you're doing the challenges. Um, and, you know, receiving those emails gives me a bit of a boost because I'm communicating via an email to the people taking part. So thank you for your emails on your scores. Um, that's it from me today. Remember, 
Do stay connected with those that are around you. It's very, very important. And the last message from me on this Monday afternoon is the virtual cross country challenge. Remember to run two kilometers if you are in year five and year six, which is 2000 meters, 1.5 kilometers if you're in year three or year four, which is 1500 meters. Time yourself, see how fast you can go and then send in your scores to the PE email address. And then we can see who the overall winners are of FPJS, as well as entering the virtual competition in Berkshire. Thank you very much for listening. I hope to see some of you very, very soon. And we'll have another assembly next week. Thank you very much and goodbye. Let's stop sharing our screen. Uh, nearly. There it is. And goodbye.